Vi uh, den lave helt naked. The guys from Manson all come in and they're like, God damn, when did you get such a big fucking dick? I'm like, man, you've got a big cock. I'll give you a golden shower. Oh, they were trying to pee and everything. Um, Twizzy with gave me in the toilet and he tried to pee on me and everything. I got pissed. I took a roll of toilet paper and I peed on it. And I threw it towards the camera. You suck. You're a fucking bastard. They took a fish head and they threw it in the shower. But that was after I already got out. And Scott was dead in the shower. But not all of Marilyn Manson's followers were of the fly-by-night nymphomaniac persuasion. The sadistic leader of this now world-famous band had a softer side. To me, the nicest thing about Marilyn Manson was Brian's girlfriend, Missy, who was a sweetheart, who in those days I told Brian that she's too good for him. And I'm just sorry that she's not with him to enjoy all the effort she put in to help him get where he has gotten. When I first met Brian was back in uh, the summer of 92, actually at a Beastie Boys concert. He was there with his, um, his first kind of long-term girlfriend and name withheld, of course. And he was with her. I was with a bunch of my friends. And we had seen each other before just because of the music scene and whatever. And at the show, we kind of made eye contact and whatever. But he was with his girlfriend. And I wasn't going to try and pursue anything. So. After the show, his band was playing later on that week, at the weekend or whatever, at Washington Square. And uh, he was passing out flyers for that show. And as I passed, he made sure that he came up to me and he's like, hey, you know, what's up, blah, blah, blah. Here's um, a flyer for my next show. I really want you to go. Um, if you can, bring a paper airplane and a bottle of Jack Daniels. And I just kind of looked at him knowing perfectly well that I was never going to be able to get a bottle of Jack Daniels, being that I was like 17 years old, already underage, you know, for any sort of nightclub. But, you know, um, paper airplane thing I probably could do, but didn't happen. Never went. So the next weekend after that was the, um, the Slammy Awards, and he was with Jordy at the time, hanging out at the button. I was there not another time with my friends. Ran into him then, Jordy and I were friends before, Brian and I were friends, so he introduced me to him and he was, you know, I gotta get your number and, you know, I'm going away to Tampa this weekend for a show, so here's, here's my number, I'll call you, and we ended up getting together after that. And then there were those who would, in the Reverend Manson's mind, turn against him and pay for it later. Basically, Brian got arrested in Jacksonville after a show. During the show, apparently he had his uh, two-foot plastic phallus on. He was stroking it and squirted out a liquid onto the crowd. And Jacksonville is a home for three Christian coalition-type organizations. They really don't cotton to that. They don't understand it like we do in Fort Lauderdale. So they arrested him. I got the police report. Um, also, Jessica from Jack Off Jill got arrested that night, too, for something. Jessica getting arrested, charged, but not convicted of prostitution with Manson in Jacksonville created a great story for Jack Off Jill's bio. Any sort of controversy is great press for any band. So I put um, Brian's name in the paper along with Jessica's name because anytime someone gets arrested, that's what you do. I still can't believe that Brian got Brian Hugh Warner got so bent out of shape because I printed his name in the paper. It doesn't seem to be a big deal now. I mean, his name's in the paper all the time. But at the time, he, I guess he was still living with his parents in Boca. And uh, he didn't want his name in the paper. In the paper, we called him what he wanted, which was Mr. Manson. Um, but when you get arrested, you go by the name on the police report. So if you're arrested in a porn shop and your name is Paul Rubens, that's what goes in the police report, not Pee Wee Herman. But he thought he was special. He thought that that shouldn't... He should have a special exception. So he not only doesn't call to, to talk about it, he calls, he actually has Jessica from Jack Off Jill call and say, Mr. Manson's very mad at you. One moment from Mr. Manson, and then he gets on the phone, and basically with his attitude like I'm supposed to suck his butt, like I guess all the other local writers did. Koretsky was just a fire starter, just because he, Koretsky did anything he could just to push Brian's buttons, just because he wanted Brian to call him or whatever. So he called me up and said, uh, not to use his name again or there would be consequences. And I said, like what? And he said, uh, 
that I would have to look over my shoulder and worry about my physical well-being, although I don't remember the exact words. Um, I said, are you really going to do something? And he said, no, not me, my fans. I think Brian called him up and left him some sort of death threat. And he just repeated, look, I said, don't use my name. And uh, I guess at that point, I, I think about it, I probably even laughed. I didn't mean to be disrespectful to a guy that wears dresses, but um, he basically, basically went off and said a whole bunch of other stupid things that I later put in a column, which really made him mad. And apparently Laura Werder, who was running his fan club at the time, said he was throwing stuff against the wall, cursing my name, which sort of made me happy. Manson once described his girlfriend as the only person left that he was capable of feeling any love for. And through a rocky six-year relationship, Missy became the closest person to Brian Hugh Warner. A major part of his personal and professional life, Missy knew what made Manson tick better than anyone else.